Welcome to the Grand Canyon. We have embarked on a 280 mile geologic journey down the Colorado River and its magnificent side canyons. The focus of our research will be the Cambrian period, an ancient seafloor 540 million years old, which represents the sudden appearance of almost all major animal groups on Earth. With the canyon's unforeseen challenges and extremes, we navigate the vast layers of geologic time and place that help shape this Earth, its continents, and its life forms. The stretch of the canyon is the very upper part of the canyon. It's called Marble Canyon. Powell came in here and called it Marble Canyon because, uh, well, he knew better. He knew that these walls weren't marble, but they were, in some places, very highly polished limestone, which is the precursor to marble. And uh, I think he just kind of wanted to romanticize his uh, experience, even though people at the time thought of this area as rather a wasteland. What we'll be studying on this uh, expedition is uh, trace fossils. Trace fossils are signs of how the animals actually lived. In general, fossils are preserved in conditions that are not conducive to life, a landslide or something. This magnificent place, the Grand Canyon, carved by the Colorado and its many large tributaries, has revealed for geologists uh, series of changing stories of environments and changing conditions of some of the earliest life history of, of the Earth. 540 million years ago or so, this whole area that you see here was probably some sort of beach, tidal flat, something that you might see uh, maybe on the coast of uh, modern Virginia or Yucatan, but without any land plants, because this predated any land plants, uh, and without any uh, Without any fancy animals, really, all life was as advanced as uh, some very interesting forms, but in the marine environment, there were no land animals or plants at the time. These are some of the most ancient rocks exposed on Earth, 1.7 billion years old. All these vertical lines you see aren't bedding. It's not as if this was uplifted. What had happened instead, these are metamorphic rocks. and. They underwent extreme tectonic pressure, like this. And all these platy minerals, micas and things that are flat, orient themselves opposite to the force on both sides. And it makes this sort of foliation, foliation like pages in a book. Pretty stuff. This is an excellent example of Middle Cambrian trace fossils. These are places where a trilobite was walking along, stirring up the mud as it went along and making two furrows that were later also infilled with sand. samples that we brought back from yesterday's excursion. These are some trace fossils. This one's kind of common. It's called Tychicthus. This is a cast, so in natural life it would have been like this. And all the sand infilled the burrow that apparently this worm must have burrowed shallowly and then started filling in as it went down lower and lower and lower. So this was the last burrow, it was the very bottom. And all these other little remnants of the infilled burrow are called Spriten. One of the fun things about working in the Bright Angel Shale is that there were so many strange animals living at the time, making so many strange tracks, that every once in a while you'll find something new and interesting. Now this is something that we think is new. It's a track that looks similar to a known track called Phodicnites batumulus, but this one is a little bit bigger and not quite as long. It's about 10 centimeters long, and about every centimeter you can see a little pockmark where probably some jointed arthropod went walking along, leaving a trace. 
Starts here and ends there.